All right, I'm making a video. It's pretty late, but it's also in the morning. It is Christmas time. So Merry Christmas, uh, everyone. Hope everyone. Um, I hope everyone is having a or are going to have a great Christmas. I would say I'm blessed, uh, very blessed, and I'm humble because I'm blessed. Um, to be in my home studio here, very blessed. Um, to get started with the video, I don't want to be very long, but one thing I love about home studios compared to commercial studios, and I think it's the best advantage of all, and this is why commercial studios have a hard time with this, is because I love the fact I can be in this studio, my studio, anytime I want. It's not locked out for another client. That's the great thing about it. I can be here any I can be here all day if I want. And I ain't gonna worry about I don't have to worry about getting booked. I don't have to worry about trying to book uh some time. If I wanna come in at three o'clock in the morning and lay down a record, I can. So without that being without that or without delay, well I wanna talk a few minutes about R and B. I was watching some um, videos about talking about R&B music. R&B music is no different than it than there's a lot of people think that R&B music have died. R&B music of the if you go all the way back to the 40s or 50s or 60s or whatever it was calling it, uh, blues, R&B, the 60s, you know, with the change in technology and the change in generation. Music is generational, period. Um, if you look at it, it's no different than someone even, and I'm in my 50s. It's, um, it's no different than me um, throwing on a Duke Ellington record from the 40s, right? Listen to a big band, Duke, you know, Duke Ellington. I don't do that because I don't. I'm not into big band music. I didn't grow up with big band music. I grew up with R&B music. So, with that being said, that's no different than what people are listening to today. The issue, the issue that you're gonna have, like I said, when it comes to people that are not feeling a lot of the, of the modern artists today is because they're people my age or older. It's no different than the recording studio of people that are stuck with still needing um, a Neve console and a 24 track tape machine. And don't get me wrong. I have a large guy, you know, as far as wanting a console, I love consoles because that's the way I, I like working on consoles. Does not mean that if you see someone without a console, that the studio is missing an important element. All I can say is that a console does add an element of an element to your music. That's all I can say. Now, whether you choose to use it or not is on that you or that person. But it's generational. It's no different than going back to music about uh, r and It's generational. Um, it's going to change. It's no different than there are people that grew up that love funk music. Funk music is late 60s, 70s music. Funk. The funk era. If you really go back or going into disco music, like I believe, like for example, the um, like Night Fever, uh, not necessarily the Doobie Brothers, but um, I'm drawing a blank on their name right now because that's what happens when you get older, you start forgetting stuff. But um, look at the 70s. You know, when you had Donna Summer, when she was alive. 
of various artists. And you think about it, even to this day, do you throw on those records and just, you know, I'm talking about people that are younger or even my age. Do I throw the classic 70s music that just, just it just over, overwhelms me and wows me that I have to listen to it all the time? No. I like a lot of 70s music. I like a lot of music because I start a, I as a musician, as a trumpet player, and being heavily involved in music, I was engulfed in around all kinds of genres of music as I was learning to play the trumpet. So, And at the time, that music was fresh and new, including the birth of hip-hop. Hip, uh, I was alive and well when the birth of hip-hop started. Even though some people claim that hip hop was earlier than the seventies, that's debatable. But if you look at it, look at hip hop. Look at seventies hip hop, eighties hip hop, nineties hip hop, two thousands hip hop to to the modern hip hop. It's not even the same. Um, back then, people would just rap. It wasn't even called. It was really called rap music. Um, before it became, they start calling it the hip hop. But really, at that time, before drum machines became a big thing and sampling, most of the time, your earlier rap, you know, like um, Curtis Blow, or even going into the Fat Boys, um, Sugar Hill Gang, and all them. They would rap over R&B instrumental music. So, it then it just merged into what it is today. Talking about the NWA of the of the eighties, all those eighties rappers started coming out: Queen Latifah, Heavy D, um, Chub Rock, KSR One, D Nice. Uh, and the list just goes on and on. Special Ed, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Um, and it just became into like sampling R&B licks and just using samples, you know, and then, you know, ranging from, uh, even if I talk about Public Enemy, and then the birth of Tupac, leaving Digital Underground and then Biggie Smalls and it just goes on and on and on and then Jay-Z and just goes on and on and on so music is generational period and the way we record and the way we make music and the music industry is constantly going to change people everyone that's fighting this and think that certain genres of music is dead or, you know, the the music industry or whatever is dead or record labels are dead or whatever. The only thing that's changing is the way we do things. It's kind of like if you go, and I'm just going to throw a few more analogies out there. You have to look at it out of the perspective that because something changed. That something, yeah, naturally, a certain way we do things in life is going to change when something changes. No different than horse and carriage and buggies. People, it was a big deal to have a horse, you know, or a or buggy, carriage and all that, stagecoach or whatever. That was a big deal to travel by a horse. And that was a common thing. Farming and agriculture was a normal thing. And to the invention, and, and as they started getting better and better, inventing machinery and industrial equipment and the birth of steam engines and cars and Computers and technology and everything that's just evolving to what it is today. 
will change the way things and people's jobs, the way they used to do things, and that stuff fades away. And as we get older, a lot of us are going to pass away. We're all going to die. I hate to make that sound so grim on a Christmas day. But there are a lot of R&B artists that have that have died. You know, I would go, I'm going to name a few. One of the singers from Jade passed away. Singers from 702 passed away. The lead singer from Intro passed away. The lead, the lead singer, from, one of the singers from H-Town, lead singer from H-Town, Dino, passed away. Um, Tony Thompson from High Five passed away. Um, even some of the rappers that I admired a, a lot of, Guru from Gangstar, passed away. Heavy D passed away. Um, DMX passed away. Um, MC Bree passed away. Um, so to wrap up the video. You know, skip it, and then we go back with artists, you know, that was either passed away or died or was killed or whatever. You know, Leah was killed you know, in a plane accident. Um, a lot of groups lose members to death and accidents. Um, but the genre of music, R&B music, was just, an, it was just, an, it was a... It's a time frame. It's no different than going back to the 40s where people, and I guarantee if you, if you had to, if you could go back in time and bring a lot of people that have passed away that grew up in the era of bebop or the 1920s, which would have been our great-grandparents, our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents, that was a, that was their genre. It was listening to big band and, Dancing and doing the bebop and all, you know, and that was the thing. And then you had a culture where blues, and you had pioneers like BB King and um, Bobby Blue Bland and 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 artists like that. Um, that was a thing. And then modern, you know, early R and B, you know, funk, disco. Early R&B became a thing, as the old stuff, you know, having listen to the '60s and having quartets of that that type of, because you ask anyone today, even myself, do I throw on a Four Tops or a Temptations record? No. When I want to listen to R, when I want to listen to music, I'm listening to '90s music because I was in my 20s in the '90s. And uh, even in the 80s, I was in my teens. Or I was a kid in the 80s. So being influenced around that kind of music as a kid, even in the 70s, I was really, you know, between the ages, you know, because I was born in 1970. So 1975, I'm five years old, listening to, on the radio, they're playing music like Earth, Wind & Fire. That's the way of the world. They're playing Stevie Wonder, Superstitious. A lot of all the early the Stevie Wonder's best hits were 60s and 70s and some 80s, but that was his that was his time frame. Stevie still tours and does music from his 60s, 70s, and 80s more than anything else. Stevie Wonder really he he's kept alive because of his status as an artist for that time frame and having that many hits. But Stevie doesn't have a modern sound. It's just, it is what it is. Stevie could not make a, a track like The Weeknd. It's not his thing. But Stevie is pushing 70 years old. And it's like all the artists that are 60s and 70s and 80s, you know, the ones that are still alive, that come up in the era where they were, their, their prime was the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And most people... Because music is generational, meaning even as an artist, you only have so much time. It doesn't look right having a lot of artists up there with gray hair. 
and you just you know most artists that up there most artists that if you got gray hair if you're 60 70 years old you might be on a show that might be doing either reminiscing type of shows where they'll bring back an artist that had a classic hit from the 70s and 80s or whatever and one of those type of shows but most of those artists are not modern today because it's dated so R&B, like anything else, is just a time frame. R&B, you have to look at it like that. There are a lot of people, like even myself, that grew up on R&B because we that's because I play a lot of R&B artists like H Town, Intro, uh, TLC, um, Eric Benet, um, Whitney Houston. Uh, I can go back to the 80s and 70s where I'm playing R&B bands like Midnight Star, Cameo, Confunction, um, and so forth. And just even R&B solo artists like Luther when he was alive or Freddie Jackson or Stephanie Mills. And a lot of these artists are still, the ones that are alive are still torn off their, le off their legacies. But Music is generational. It's no different than going back and throwing on some Duke Ellington big band music. No one listens to that today. They just don't. Or going back and listen to 50s music. No one's listening to Elvis Presley. Even though there's about a billion Elvis Presley impersonators. But that's a niche thing in small pockets here and there, you know, whatever the case. But no one's listening to Elvis Presley. No one's listening. Even if you're into country music, no one's listening to, Mer, you know, Merle Haggard or uh, Minnie Pearl or no one's listening to that type of country in country music today. They're not. Um, there might be every now and then you'll go back and listen to, somebody might want to pull out an Alan Jackson record from, in country music. Just a reminisce, or even you have classic stations that still play 70s and 80s music, rock or whatever. And every now and then they'll throw an ACDC's Black and Back in Black or Def Leppard's uh, photograph or whatever. But modern music is what we have right now. Whether you like it or not, it's no different. And most people that don't like it is because they didn't grow up, they're not growing up on it. And it's usually older people. Older people want to hear what they grew up on. It's generational. Most older people, a time frame, can't get out of it. It's kind of like you take a rapper today and a rapper from the 80s. A rapper from the 80s probably can respect modern rappers, but in their mind, they're thinking... For what rappers are doing today, they're probably in their mind thinking, that's not rapping, not compared to the way I rapped. So, it's all generational whether we like it or not. Music is, it. everything is going to change. It's an inevitable. It's going to change. Including the elimination of 24-track tape machines. As many people that want a 24 track for tape machine, I would love that because I love the sound of tape machines. But a DAW, for what it can do, I don't care if you're using Pro Tools, Cubase, FL Studio, Reaper, Cakewalk, Studio One, doesn't matter. It's way more efficient in its capabilities than a tape machine. Whether you want to, whether you want to, and and I'll end on this note, it, the most people that still want an API or Neve or an SSL console or whatever with a 24 tape machine are people that are still recording live bands or orchestras. For the most part, and there are they are stuck in that type of music. 
But then there are a lot of people that realize, yeah, okay, I limited tape machine, but I'm still gonna have a, you know, and I'm done no different. I got a console uh, and outboard gear, but that's a different video. So I hope everyone have a happy Christmas and um, and I hope you got what you want. And I hope that summed up is R&B dead. R&B is no different than any other style of music like disco or country or, you know, and even the other genre. Some people think that the other genre of music or R&B has been pushed purposely to eliminate it. But in actuality, even if you take classic rock or classic or country music, it, if you take 60s classic country music or even 80s rock, you know, and I'll go back to Motley Crue or Guns N' Roses or Metallica or ACD, ACDC or Def Leppard, and the list just goes on and on. Most young people are not even playing that type of rock today. Um... We're just, a lot of times we will start to make, especially us as we get older, we will find conspiracy theories or we will find uh, excuses and blame when something changes because we are creatures of habit and we don't like a lot of changes because we become complacent. And it's inedible that we have to understand that, for example, there are some people that, when it comes to music, and I'll go back to the people that are stuck with just bands. That's why you hear a lot of guys, and I hate to be mean, I'm not trying to be mean on someone who's 60s. Like, I'll, listen, I'll use Rick Beato, or um, I'll even use, um, I will use even uh, my man, um, drawing a blank again, on Produce Like a Pro. Um, and a lot of people that have, you know, or even a lot of people that, oh man, I, I, I'm a Beatles fan, but look at the era of the Beatles. The era of the Beatles was 60s, mostly early 70s, that's it. They didn't have a long reign, you know, same thing with any other genre of music for, of a time frame. And who's going to be most of the, most of the people that are Beatles fans are our, our, how old? So, it's no different than like me being an Earth, Wind, and Fire fan. But look how old I am. I wouldn't expect someone 20 years old to be an Earth, Wind, and Fire fan unless they've been influenced by some around them, someone around them who's playing Earth, Wind, and Fire to influence them. But if someone who's 20 years old and their music influence is like The Weeknd, Or they rather listen to Ariana Grande and so forth. Because there are even a lot of, and I can just go on with Alicia Keys, Beyonce, especially with Beyonce with, 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 with Destiny Child. There are a lot of people that are younger than, younger than me that are not feeling Destiny's Child because Destiny's Child was mostly late 90s. And then they all kind of went solo. Kelly, Kelly Rowland went her way and Michelle went her way and Beyonce went her way and they kind of, and Beyonce kind of had the most successful career as a solo artist. And so it's kind of like, it's generational. It's That's all it is. It's kind of like music is inevitable to change. The way we create music is inevitable to change. The tools we use to create music is inevitable to change. No one today... 30 years ago, a computer was a joke as a tool to be used for making music. Now, it's the primary source. It's like 30 years ago, it was an insult to call someone a nerd. Now, it's kind of like the opposite. You kind of want to be a geek, um, uh, uh, you know, whatever the case. And I don't mean necessarily a dorky, you know, the, you know, the get picked on. I'm talking about someone, because now geek is someone who's actually... Using the term 
in a way that someone is super knowledgeable at a particular subject. Being stupid or being smart was picked on by stupid people. Now it's the opposite. Being stupid is being, or smart people pick on stupid people. It's not cool to be stupid. But back in the day, it wasn't cool to be smart. You were the nerd. You were picked on. You were the geek, the dork, the weakling. Now it's the opposite. People, some of the, the you know, and I'm, and I'll just, I don't want to go far left with this. So I want to end the video. But like I said, in the end, summing up the video, it's like um, what it is. What you're listening to today is what it is. And you have to accept it. We all have to accept it. It's just change. Now, no one's saying that you have to give up that classic stuff if you don't want to. But it's it. music is what it is. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great one. And we'll see y'all in the next one. Have Merry Christmas.